Hello and welcome to Scoot episode number nine, guys. We're back with Scoot Talk Sports, back with a couple of friends of mine, and I'm really excited to be back. So thank you very much. Right off the top, I just want to take a quick moment to give you guys a quick little update on what's been going on with the pod. You guys have noticed it hasn't been happening quite at the same frequency as uh, originally planned. <laughs> life changes have occurred. A little bit of life changes. Uh, I'm starting a new job back at the place that I used to work uh, earlier in the year. So we'll, we'll just, uh, as life changes, um, we're going to probably be a little bit more uh, random in terms of when the availability of people, uh, guests, and myself uh, we'll kind of determine that schedule, but do look for more episodes. There is some great uh, guests in the works, uh, especially with the Canadian Premier League uh, wrapping up. There's a few folks with more time, and uh, and I'm going to try and take advantage of that as much as I can. So let's get into today's episode. Let's first introduce those who are on here with us. Uh, we'll go from top to bottom on the whole <laughs> live stream here on Twitch. For those who don't know, we do stream the recording of this live at twitch.tv slash scooter s-c-o-o-t-r screw the e we don't need it tobes welcome in uh our friendly united states uh soccer expert uh who's been prepared and ready for the upcoming uh upcoming window here welcome in tobes nice to see you yeah great to see you scoot it's been a while since i've gotten to ramble about Greg Berhalter and the USMNT team selection. So I'm really excited to get to do that today. Uh, by rent, do you mean it's sort of a, a session of, of relief? You're able to kind of uh, let go of some of that built up angst. Oh, and yeah. Feelings. Yeah, yeah. We'll get into I, it. But uh, this is one of the worst rosters Greg's called up. Not in terms of like ability, <laughs> but just like the decisions that he's made. This is one of the worst. I'm looking forward to it. All right. <laughs> mm hmm. And of course, we can't have toes without the the uh, sort of uh, compatriot, a, a, a uh, someone who has citizenship in both countries, but makes it pretty clear which one he favors. Welcome in, Jeffrey <laughs> P. Nesker. Uh, you've done a lot of different things. You write, you take part in podcasts for Waking the Red, you do a whole bunch of different pieces. So thank you for making time to join us today, buddy. Always, Scoobs. Always, Scoobs. But you buried the lead. This is number nine. So are we going to do that Beatles intro or, or am I going to be stuck doing it? Uh, you nine. might have to be stuck Number doing it. Nine. All right. Well, there I did it. I did it. Also, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, for abiding my desire to not go big head, Jeff. Uh, I hate big head, Jeff. <laughs> Staring at my own big, huge head for an hour is uh, is madness inducing. So so I appreciate it. It's I'm taking the hit for both of you guys here. Thank you. Just thank one you. One big scoot. It's really unfortunate <laughs> if you're here watching it, but you're going to have to deal with it. All right. So yeah. thanks again, guys, for taking the time. I, I don't want to, I, I don't think we've spent a lot of time organizing this, this, this episode, at least I haven't. So I think today what we're going to do is we're going to talk through the squads. We'll talk through selection. We'll talk through mm -hmm. some of those pieces there, and then we'll get into uh, the schedule, which is going to be a couple of big games for both, both teams. So absolutely. Uh, I think, I think I'd like to start off with the American selection just because Tobes. I so think would I. <laughs> some things ready to go. Uh, and then we'll move into the Canadian mm. selection. So um, if, if you guys haven't, you can go and check out uh, the teams that are, or the, sorry, the players that have been picked online. Um, we're basically just referring right off the, the United States uh, Twitter here. But I want to get your first kind of thoughts, Tobes. If when you looked, when you saw this this release, when you saw the squads come out, what were your first thoughts? What were your first couple sentences that uh, rambled into your head? Um, the first thought I had was like, "Am I blind? I don't I don't see John Brooks. Where Where's John Brooks? Like I, I just don't get it. <laughs> I can't see it. And it turns out, no, I'm not blind. Uh, John Brooks was completely left off the roster, which is mind blowing. They say that he had. You know, he came out and made this pretty mature statement. You know, I haven't been in the best form for country. I had one bad game against Honduras that we won four to one. Um, so it's to I totally understand being left off. Uh, but, you know, I did just play a really good game in the Champions League uh, midweek. So that was kind of his, his statement. And you read that and you're just it doesn't make any sense because <laughs> if you're going to hold John Brooks accountable for one bad game against Honduras, then I have questions about like 10 people on this roster who either aren't playing for their clubs at all, people like Reggie Cannon, who didn't play, came in, played 17 minutes, and then got his knee injured and is somehow in this camp. Questions about Sebastian Legette, who's been terrible for the team for nine months now. He was okay before that, but he's been terrible for a while now. I, I don't understand why Greg's boys don't get the same treatment that John Brooks, you know, one of the only people we have that has World Cup experience from 2014, scored a goal in the World Cup, uh, Great defender on the best defense in the Bundesliga last season. Not so much this season, mm -hmm. but he, he's back into form. He played the last three matches. He's been great. So it doesn't make any sense. 
I'll go to you, Jeffrey. What did you think when you saw that? Was it kind of the same feeling as Tobes? Were you really focused on maybe one big player that wasn't there? Or what did you think? Well, I mean, I always check in with Tobes now. So my <laughs> my opinions are kind of Tobes' opinions. But uh, yeah, no, I noticed I noticed a lot of damage control around this roster. And of course, when I saw Sebastian Legette, I knew that we were in for a treat once we checked in with Tobes. Uh, you know, it's it's interesting to see um, who's included and who isn't? Uh, I agree with Tobes that this is definitely Greg's Greg's guys at the expense of of some people that maybe should have gotten a shout. Um, form appears to have no bearing, which always gives me a bit of pause um, because it's like, is he just arbitrary? Like, are, are these his boys, or is he just arbitrarily choosing choosing out of a hat? There doesn't seem to be a lot of logic in it. Um, and then again, you know. It, Sean Johnson, uh, how many minutes is he getting from Man City again? But he's your he's your starting number one. That that's just hilarious to me. Yeah, um, we can when we go position by position, we can talk about. Yeah. Oh, ugh, I have so many comments. <laughs> <laughs> as long as we're going to talk like that. Um, also, there's a si significant lack of strikers on this roster. Mm -hmm. Significant, um, and you know, obviously that you know you don't have a lot of strikers in the pool that are in form. Uh, you know, the TFC so bring none fan of them. Is, well, the TFC fan <laughs> in me is like, why aren't you giving Josie a shout again? I mean, the man I mean, is, is, is scoring goals at a pretty ridiculous clip after two years of not scoring anything. Mm -hmm. um, maybe he deserves a shout. Like, you know, I'm sad because Josh Sargent isn't there and any roster without Josh Sargent is a roster that makes <laughs> me kind of angry. But uh, yeah, it, it's a bit of an island of misfit toys. And, and is that lack of respect to the opponents because i don't know about you but one of those opponents is l tree so uh maybe you want your best squad in there yeah, um maybe. yeah it's just it just it seems it seems galaxy brain in the worst possible way like mm -hmm. like you know we're gonna play four-dimensional chess with ourselves and the only person that we're gonna hurt <laughs> at the end is ourselves so i mean yeah yeah I like that four dimensional chess with ourselves. I that that's something yeah. I'm keeping I'm writing it down and, and saying it's a Jeffrey, but it's it's definitely mine. Nice, now. nice. Uh nice. so let's explore this roster. Let's get into a little bit of the bits. Well, I think we'll break it down the way that they did it. I like that four section kind of approach. So do I. <laughs> it's like a PowerPoint in like in like one page. It's really, right? really nice. You yeah, look at the Canadian yeah. one, it's just a bunch of big list. It's You're some, like, is, yeah, is this a, a party invite? Like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> Because it looks kind of like a party. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, We're the U.S. The one. Same. The U.S. one. I mean, I'm looking at the one that's got the the um, the um, what it now br. I don't even remember what that stands for. Um. Uh, 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 oh, uh, Bleacher uh, Report. Yeah, Bleacher Report. I wanted yep. to say Barstool Sports, but I didn't want to insult them. So Bleacher <laughs> Report. Uh, uh, and like, look, look at all the information that we're getting here. We're getting, you know, where they play for, what position they play. You know, this is this is some quality stuff. The the Pulisic, the Pulisic picture, I mean, was was par for the course. But but we'll just yeah. forget about that. Yeah, always yeah. throw him on the top. Always, always, always. <laughs> doesn't right, matter so that he's injured. Gonna play maybe fifteen minutes off the bench. He's he's the first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> first exactly. one you talk about. Yeah. So mm -hmm. let's let's crack open the first section, Tobes. Let's let's look at the goalkeepers right mm -hmm. away. Okay. This is always interesting because of the selections that are made based on who's playing in mm -hmm. their in their leagues versus who's not. Um, I'm going to let you just let me know what you think of this one because uh, I think yeah. you have some thoughts. So the goalkeepers, we got Zach Steffen, Matt Turner, and Sean Johnson. And, and it's I feel like for most countries, it is hard to be angry at the goalkeeper selections. But even here, even here. So our three most talented keepers, of course, are Matt Turner, Zach Steffen, and Ethan Horvath. I get not bringing Ethan Horvath. He's on the bench in Nottingham Forest. I don't have a problem with him not being here. But starting off with bringing Sean Johnson as your third goalkeeper doesn't make sense to me. He's like the fifth best American keeper in MLS. It, like, where's Tim Malia? I would, I would have picked Gabe Slonina. I would have picked a ton of other yep. keepers before Sean Johnson. But that's the third goalkeeper spot. They're not going to play. So, you know, I guess I can't be too angry about that. So then you go to the, the Zach Steffen, Matt Turner debate about who's going to start. Matt Turner playing fantastic for uh, the Revs in MLS, every week starter, one of the best keepers in MLS for the last couple of years now, um, has kept loads of clean sheets for us, uh, seemingly randomly got dropped before the Costa Rica game, so we brought Zach Steffen in, who conceded a goal in like the first minute. Uh, we ended up winning that game 2-1. <laughs> and, now, and now Greg in his press conference yesterday comes forward and says, Zach Steffen will start 
against Mexico, which I don't want to come off as saying I don't think Zach Steffen's good because Zach Steffen is good. He's talented. He's uh, aggressive with his just distribution, which is something that Matt Turner doesn't have. But I, how can you drop a goalkeeper who's kept loads of clean sheets, is still in good form, is starting every week for a guy who has whose only action since the last camp was to start in a cup match, which in which he lost the penalty shootout. Yep. And yeah, <laughs> it's hard to understand when you're, when you're looking at players, especially because for me, like, and again, I'm not a professional. I'm not mm-hmm. a manager. I'm not an expert in any of these things. There's my disclaimer, but <laughs> if I'm selecting a squad for a two week window, I'm always going to look at, at how well they're playing currently, how much time they've had, if they're in good fitness, good form. Mm-hmm. That's, that's to me, basic selection strategy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah. sometimes when I see the United States picks, I just feel like Burhalter, and you've said this many times before, Tobes, you've said it the same thing, uh, Jeffrey, but it, it's, it's like he's like, hey, these are my guys. These are my friends. You know, these are the guys from my neighborhood. I know them well. I don't care that he hasn't played in five to ten uh, weeks or whatever it happens to be. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it seems like bias is affecting his ability to select the best squad to mm-hmm. give you guys the best chance. And Jeffrey, we shouldn't what... forget quickly. We just yeah. shouldn't yeah. forget that um, Zach Steffen was the Columbus Crew keeper when Greg Berhalter was what exactly yep. exactly, and I, it's, exactly. that's it. That's literally it. You know, he yeah. wants a keeper who can distribute. So he goes to his good old friend, Zach Steffen, who again is good, just not as good as Matt Turner yeah. right now. And, I, I mean, I mean, and he's out of practice, right? Like, let's mm-hmm. let's be honest. Half of L Tree plays in MLS, right? Mm-hmm. Quite quite a significant amount are now, you know, doing the designated player rounds in MLS. Mm-hmm. They've all lost to, Z- to Matt Turner, right? Yeah. The revs <laughs> are on the back of a supporter shield points. Uh, uh, record. Zach Steffen has his spot on the bench sometimes at Man City. Like it, it's almost like Greg read four four two and was like, "Oh, I like this guy." Like forget about the fact that they have a relationship. <laughs> He's like, "Oh, I like this guy. He plays for Man City. We should we should get him." And it just it boggles the mind. Like mm-hmm. you roll with the hot hands, guys. I mean, I it it's not rocket science. And and you know, Mister Mister Guyliner, like is is the guy that should be your starting goalkeeper it's that mm-hmm. simple i mean if zach stefan needs minutes ask pep for them not greg like mm-hmm. or don't get tournament. eliminated from the cup competition where you get yeah or start. don't get a, exactly <laughs> i mean like it just it's it's insane to me it really really is like that that is i, I mean i like it obviously because i'd rather you have you know mr mr ride the pine than 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 guy liner of the points record mm-hmm. in net for you but but it boggles the mind. It really is like that's a that's a horrifically that's a horrific oversight by my on my watch. Mm-hmm. And I think you kind of nailed a little bit of a, a point there too. Is if, if I'm a Canadian fan, and I'm playing against the Americans. If I see Matt Turner in net, I, I'm like, oh wow, okay, Turner's in net. Like this is serious. Like he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time I've seen him play at the international level, at the MLS level, the man comes to play. He's scary. Mm-hmm. He's Absolutely, a great, he's a great keeper, and and if you throw in Zach Steffen, a guy that I'm not familiar with, who's been in, you know, as familiar with, I should say, who I don't mm-hmm. get to see play very often, I'm not going to be as intimidated. Just off the top of it, and and again, off the I'm, top of it, unless it, it, I'm looking at this graphic and I'm saying, oh well, Manchester City is a thousand times better than New England Revolution, but he's the gaffer, man. That should not be <laughs> where it starts and ends, right? Like, yeah, leave yeah. that, you know, ah, ah, is so. So, look, we've any more thoughts on the keepers before maybe we move into the defenders here, Tobes? Uh, you know, I, I feel like I've been we've been very harsh on Zach Steffen, and he <laughs> the thing that the thing that I'm always told he brings is that he organizes the defense better than Matt Turner, and that he is a leader in the locker room. Like those are things that everyone always says about Zach Steffen. Things that we don't see as much when in their performance on the field. Um, that that probably play hand in the selection it that doesn't make it make sense though like zach zach Steffen can be good and matt turner is better yeah <laughs> and he's elite i mean i i take issue with a leader in the locker room when he's yeah, not starting too. like what 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 <laughs> locker room i mean the the second one for the for the also rands um start start sean johnson as a tfc supporter i love that guy just chip him into oblivion like no, living his nightmares so start start sean johnson <laughs> that'd be that'd be terrific that's what i want but yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that there's a disconnect there. He he wants to give 
I, I keep going back to the same thing. It's not Greg's responsibility to give Zach's confidence. It's Pep. You signed yeah. with Man City. You know, that's your club. Uh, it's not your old friend's responsibility to get you back up to scratch. Uh, mm -hmm. he, he needs to be brutal in a way that he's not being here. And I think it's going to, I think it's going to be an issue for you guys. If I'm honest, I, I do too. Yeah, I agree. I, I it's just, it, it's one of those things where it just looks like someone who's an amateur is looking at the club they're coming from and going, well, that's the highest level club there. That person's going to start. And mm -hmm. it feels yeah. very short-sighted, but I got to make offside twice uh, happy here and just say, look, it's like, if you're, if you're, if you're forge, you're starting uh, Henry and nobody else. It's as simple as that. <laughs> <laughs> have, to get, they have to get the GTA Hamilton <laughs> conversation in here. It's where most of the people in Canada are. That's where our audience yeah, is. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta, there's you know, no, no one lives anywhere else. Anymore. No, no, there's it's no snow tum anywhere else. Tumbleweeds <laughs> and tumbleweeds and sadness. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll get to that when we talk about Edmonton. So defenders mm -hmm. uh, for the United States. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, I don't know if you felt there was a lot of surprises in here. I think there was a shock in terms of who wasn't selected. But in terms of what we know from Burhalter and who he picks, mm -hmm. nothing crazy. Uh, Tobes, I'll go to you to start again, just because this is the... Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. you always go to Tobes. Absolutely. You're the United <laughs> States guy, you know what I mean? You're raw, raw, you're standing out in the rain with the gun and the American flag type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> Defenders, what was your first thought when you saw this group? We've already touched on John Brooks. Uh, it's also worth pointing out Sergio Dest, absent due to injury, a mysterious injury at Barcelona where he still made the bench um, for their game, but apparently can't come play for us. Mm -hmm. um, so that that immediately scares you because that's your best ball playing center back and your only fullback who can who can really distribute out the back and combine in tight spaces. So we're left with a bunch of defenders who are pretty quick, pretty good at defending, but not great at playing from the back, which I don't want to do it. But back to Zach Steffen, why are you yep. playing a ball playing? Why are you playing like a dis distribution based keeper if none of your defenders are going to be able to receive the ball that you're passing them? We are going to concede. I guarantee this. We're going to concede. Zach Steffen's going to play a long ball over the first or, or play like a mid range ball over the first line of press to one of our fullbacks. They're going to get pressed, lose the ball, and Mexico's going to score. That is going to happen mm -hmm. tonight. I am like more certain than I've ever been that we were going to concede <laughs> doing this. Um, because, you know, DeAndre Edlin. He's a great defender and he's great providing width. He's very fast. He, he's not great receiving the ball in tight spaces. Nope. Say so Anthony Robinson's almost the same player on the left hand side. Yep. Um, Chris Richards would be the ball playing center back I'd look to, but I don't expect him to start. I think we're going to start uh, Miles Robinson, who's one of the first names on the team sheet, next to Walker Zimmerman, who who's who Greg likes. I um, but this is one of those cases where Greg really likes him and he's you know kind of deserving of the spot. Him him or Chris Richards, I wouldn't be too upset they bring different things chris richards is better at ball playing and walker zimmer is probably better at dealing with raul jimenez <laughs> so here's oh. a question tobes before you before you continue just because i, I sometimes i don't have clarity on this it, they are mm -hmm. going to play a three back yes i, I think Gre greg could do that he, he did that against mexico in the nations league final but i expect the 4-3-3 three, three based okay. on it yeah, mostly so based I. on his press conference comments yeah i okay. think it's gonna so be anthony robinson um Miles Robinson, Walker Zimmerman, and then DeAndre Edlin as the right back. Okay. But then you get to the backup fullbacks, and I just have questions there too because Sam Vines broke his collarbone, came back to Antwerp, uh, you know, a couple like a week ago, and he's the backup left back. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but he's one of Greg's guys. Reggie Cannon was, you know, upset about his transfer to Boa Vista in Portugal, refused to play, and then played 17 minutes and went off injured, and now he's here as our backup right Yay. back. And then Joe Scally, <laughs> who's who's our best fullback, you know, arguably our best fullback right now, played every single minute for Munch and Gladbach in the Bundesliga, only made the roster because Serginio Dest was hurt. He was called in late. So he's not going to see the field, even though he's he should be the backup or even maybe pushing DeAndre Edlin to start. Um, it doesn't... The fullback backup selections leave something to be desired. Yeah. I mean, on paper, it's a great list. Uh, you know, just, just for the, just for the casual viewer, it's a great list. You're looking at mm -hmm. guys, I mean, you know, two MLS guys and that's, and that's the long and the short of it. Right. So just, mm -hmm. just on knee jerk, you're like, okay, these guys are all over the place and they're, and they're playing in the, in the upper echelons of the European leagues. Mm -hmm. 
But mm-hmm. then you start to scratch the surface and nobody's happy at anywhere that they are. <laughs> yeah, and nobody's like getting minutes. Disasters right? at their clubs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so you know, the 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 um, Bleacher Report did well to not, not put that on the infographic, but, like, there should be sad faces next to every one of these people. Except and, Joe Scali, uh, the, who won't play. Yeah, ex- <laughs> except Joe Scali, who won't play. The Dest is 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 interesting because I think mm-hmm. I think it bears it bears uh, credence to to remind everybody listening that your club team can't refuse a FIFA call up. However, mm-hmm. they can make you injured, yeah. and then if you're rehabbing, you're not going. And that mm-hmm. to all the world feels like what's happening with Test right now. Now mm-hmm. Barcelona is a club in crisis. They owe more money in debts than most countries at this point right like they're 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 carrying a debt in the billions of euros um nobody's i mean nobody's place at barca is safe if you you know there's a guy Mm -hmm. on psg that can tell you a lot about that um so you know for des to speak up in any way shape and form ain't happening because he he wants to stay there Mm -hmm. so when they say jump he says how high um -hmm. and this is an issue that i think we're going to be uh, dealing with a whole lot more on our side of the fence mm-hmm. with players like Fonzie and Jonathan David, it's interesting that Dest is a concern here because mm-hmm. you're not playing minnows. You're playing Mexico and Jamaica. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And the fact that Barcelona couldn't care less is going, is an issue, yeah. right? I don't know if he's injured. I, I would guess he probably isn't, but they're keeping him because they don't want him to get injured. And, mm-hmm. uh, that's at the expense of your progress in a world cup qualification cycle, which Mm -hmm. raises about every alarm bell that there is to raise. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's somebody that even from a casual fan basis, if you're not an American supporter, you're still wanting to see the best players come out and play for the world cup qualifiers. Even if Burhalter doesn't like them, Mm -hmm. you know, that's put that aside. You you want to see your best players play. And Mm -hmm. Dest is a player that I would look forward to seeing, on the pitch as a, as a, not only as a, as a, if I was an American supporter, but just as a, as a fan of the North American teams, the CONCACAF region, you want to yeah. see these players come back, play and continue that pattern for that the next generation and the generation after that to become so normalized that they don't even think about the idea of, Oh, uh, let's fake an injury with the club so that I don't go yeah, like that. Yeah. That whole narrative is not new to us over here. It's, Mm-hmm. it's frustrating i mean this is this is barcelona right this isn't yeah. just any old club and then in in terms of where they are right now it, you know they're they're in they're in hell <laughs> so <Yep. laughs> like uh uh i can understand their rationale right yep. but but it doesn't it doesn't make it any easier to to digest yeah. right and and it does point towards um just how at the end of the day just how little power sometimes the the federation has despite the almighty buck despite the importance of the games you know uh uh we're gonna see this in canada uh because concacaf has a has a concacaf's got a really horrible reputation internationally and i think it's quite deserved but you know these these super clubs in europe are afraid um of 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 their players getting knocks of their players getting hit in the knees or or whatever the case may be and and you know dest has a role to play in in barcelona and barcelona is (laughs) as close to a relegation battle as they've been (laughs) in the in a hundred and something odd years so yeah yeah i i can understand it but it does it does give me pause tobes any last thoughts on the defenders from a, uh, I'll throw player. also Mark McKenzie, the fourth center back on this roster, who probably won't see the field. Also, doesn't make sense. He's glued to the bench uh, at Genk. You mm-hmm. know, he's another one with a sad face next to his name. And <laughs> to be to be left out, you know that Mark McKenzie is who everyone's pointing at. Is this is who John Brooks was left out for? And for someone who's not even playing at Genk to be brought in ahead of uh, John Brooks playing Champions League every game for Wolfsburg. It, it doesn't make any sense. And it's it's one of Greg's guys. Mark McKenzie's Greg's guy. Reggie Cannon's Greg's guy. Sam Vines is Greg's guy. Sean Johnson, Zach Steffen. We're seeing it all over the roster. Change the so, name of the team, guys. Just change it. To, Gre- to Greg's team. boys. <laughs> Greg's boys. So, or, so, so here's, here's a question. Do you think that there's something more to it? Like, let's put our tinfoil hat on for a second. Do you think that John Brooks is, is a is just a dick in the locker room or do you think conversely circling back to what i was just saying because they're greg's boys they'll go to bat for him so mark mckenzie gets a call and you know mark mckenzie goes to his to his people his agents etc etc and says look i'm not even playing for you guys so just send me on a plane 
right? Regardless of, of COVID, regardless of, of, you know, your worry about me getting injured. Do you think it's easier for Greg to get these guys to, to suit up for him? Or do you think that, that you're more inclined that there's just something going on behind the scenes and maybe John Brooks is, is kind of a jerk and nobody, and he smells bad and no one wants to share a locker room with him? <laughs> I think it's maybe a mix of both. John, John Brooks's body language in the games specifically hadn't been very good. That's why I was really happy to see him come out with that pretty mature message because that wasn't really what I was seeing from him previously. But I also think there's an element of if you're a player, you want to be on Greg's good side. And I think that some players recognize that Greg likes to make kind of deep personal connections to mm-hmm. to certain players, and he'll do that. And then it doesn't. Then their form doesn't matter anymore because right, right, right. they'll go run hard and press even if they're doing it wrong and that doesn't matter because, you know, Greg has instilled his faith in them and they're, they're legitimately friends. And I think, you know, we're going to get to the midfielders and forwards, but legit yeah, yeah. Uh, are kind of two of the biggest perpetrators of they've gotten in with Greg. So they're going to be here no matter what. Here's wow. a question from the chat and it's, it's from offside twice. It's a good question. So I'm going to bring it up for you guys. Sorry mm-hmm. to, to block you there for a second there, uh, Jeffrey, but, but, if a club is going to lose a player for a club game because playing away in Jamaica and COVID protocols, is there an argument to say why should they give up the player? His resp- he goes on to say, you know, devil's advocate. If you're paying someone 200k a week, Super Club see these players or these games is not worth it, which is a very fair, fair point. Mm-hmm. But I think I, I'm going to jump in before you guys do. My response to that would be is that there, as much as football is a business soccer is a business um mm-hmm. there are certain tenets that i think players fans and you know, supporters hold very close to them and one of them Absolutely. is the idea of international competition and the 100%. idea that players are free to move back to compete for their countries i mean here in canada one of the biggest honors for any sports person in any sport is to represent their country canada will go nuts over some random sport we've never paid attention to in our entire life because there is a high-ranking Canadian player suddenly yep. making waves or beating big-ranked players, and we all suddenly become the biggest fans of a sport we've never heard of in our entire life or never spent any time on. That's sure. that love of your country. That's the love of watching a player play for their nation. And it, it as much as absolutely, from a business standpoint, makes no sense to send them. That's why absolutely. That's why there's a FIFA mandate. I mean, yep. it, it, takes, it takes the... It takes the decision out of the club's hands. But, you know, the second you create a, a law, there'll be ways to weasel around it. And that's and, you know, this isn't this isn't a new thing. Also, you know, European clubs lump Canada and the states together under the same sort of scale of arrogance. Right. Like, well, you know, they're because because they're like, what, you want to be part of our game? Don't you have gridiron where you're apparently the best in the universe at, even though you only play it on this one continent or baseball where you're playing a world series, even though none of us, none of us get a chance to play in it. And then you're world champions like you can't have football. So there's this like there's this sort of spite that comes out of it. And then when you multiply that with you know, the fact that big, scary conca calf where you're going to play in a mud pit and, and maybe lose your ankles, you can see what what's happening here. So, so, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, listen, if I'm on the board at, at a super club, I'm going, what the hell are you talking about? But at the same time, that's in the spirit of the game, right? So I think you answered your own question. The, the, the clubs that wanted the super, <laughs> well, the clubs that wanted a super league have already said, screw football, right? Yep. So they're already, you know, getting, getting their, their, you know, they're, they're already getting themselves all, all worked up over, over this now, because it's just another rule that they don't agree with because now we're, now we're, we're, we're putting football under the microscope and it's like, well, what's applicable and what isn't. And, you know, should we have a world cup every two seconds or not, or et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> and, and everything's malleable and, and cl- the super clubs have never liked this rule. And then when you add that they're going co- across, you know, uh, to another continent to play on on horrible surfaces in a confederation that means nothing it's like multiplying zeros so so yeah yeah i mean offside twice his points are entirely valid mm-hmm. and and that's why there's checks and balances there's also just the legality it gets a little uh i think a yeah. lot of different things get uh merged together into the same thing right because Sergio desk coming to play a home game against uh mexico there's they can't stop it unless they come up with this injury but yep. then there's, you know, different countries such as like the the COVID thing and in, in Jamaica. Yep. It's not the Premier League that's stopping these players. It is like the England's 
government is stopping the players. And then the, the league and the clubs are like filing for approval. If you go to one of the red listed countries and which countries are yeah. red listed is changing all the time. So it, it's pretty complicated, but um, not every case is the same. And you see it all no. the time with the Brazilian based players. Some of them, some clubs win their appeals and get to play and some don't. And it, it's yeah. all very muddy. At least CONCACAF players aren't being arrested on the pitch as the game starts. <laughs> Trying to get deported. So, you know, never say never. Say never. never, say never. I'm knocking I mean, on arrested, wood right now. <laughs> arrested on the pitch, you're running around in the opposing team's dressing room, handing out wads of cash. I, I prefer the I prefer the, the, the latter, if we're being honest. <laughs> All, right, All right, let's so get to it. We've gone past the defenders, I think. We've talked a little bit about yeah. the, the selection, but that, that was a good... A, a good uh, foray off the road we're going to head back onto mm-hmm. the path we're going to head into the midfielders now mm-hmm. um again we're going to talk about Burhalter's boys it's a theme i think Tobes, mm-hmm. share it we'll share how, how you feel about this midfield group uh this is a little similar to the defenders and that the the starters i'm pretty happy with you have tyler adams weston mckinney and Eunice musa no problems there if that if that midfield starts i'll be very satisfied and it looks like they're going to so i'm, I'm nice. happy with that but then you get to the backups and it's Greg's boys again. Yeah, <laughs> Christian Roldan, we'll start off with him because he's not a midfielder. I don't know why he's listed here. Whenever he plays for us, it's always as a winger. So I'm throwing him off this, throwing him onto the forward list. So we're looking at Sebastian Legette, Greg Boy, Kellen Acosta, Greg Boy, but probably deserves to be here because we don't really have a backup to Tyler Adams better than him. Um, yeah. I wish we did, but... Um, and then Gianluca Busio, who I'm... I actually like Gianluca Busio. I think he's a great uh, pick here, but... If you are Georgi Mihailovic or you are Luca De La Torre, you are sitting there going, what on earth do I have to do? Luca De La Torre came in last camp, was very impressive, then went and, you know, bossed a game against Ajax in the in the Eredivisie, yep. and then gets dropped for seemingly no one because Roldan isn't actually a midfielder. And mm-hmm. Georgi Mihailovic, U23 American, most assists in MLS – didn't even get contacted no call no we're looking at you no nothing he's just he cannot believe this like what does he have to do to get included into this camp or to even get a call like you're on the fringes you're getting close you know we wanted to bring you in but we didn't have spots he's just there's not even talking to him so i don't understand i don't i don't think greg has an mls bias i think this is often stated that he does but there are mls players that he could be bringing that are better than the mls players he's bringing so i think he has a bias towards his boys it's a i mean theme. <laughs> I ask the same thing every time I see it. Where is Darlington Nagby? Where is he? I he's, know he's, he's gone. I know there's an adversarial <laughs> relationship, but his stats are ridiculous. I mean, yeah. the guy's the guy hasn't retired. What I would take him over every last one of these guys, it's except funny. maybe Tyler Adams, because Tyler Adams plays the the number six in 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 Burhalter's weirdo way. So he's yeah. he's he's locked in, but like. I just don't understand it. Like I would be, I would be holding a boombox, begging for forgiveness underneath mm-hmm. his bedroom window until we made <laughs> up. And that, like, it's it's it it, it boggles the mind. Um, Nagby is an interesting case, and he's left the complete conversation for the U.S. because everyone's just accepted he doesn't want to go. It was a bit of an adversarial relationship, but he also just went on a rant about how when you go and play away, you have to drink water that you don't know is not clean, and you could be hurting yourself <laughs> and hurting your family and. He's just completely seems uninterested and the Federation is not been kind to him. So I think that's yeah, done yeah. for people who don't I watch know. him that much. Cause we have a lot of us fans who don't even know who he is. Cause he hasn't been called in him forever. He plays a he's lot ridiculous. like Musa. He plays a lot like Eunice <laughs> Musa. He's, he's like an older Eunice Musa, older, more mature Eunice Musa who his passing is good, but his definitive feature is that he will receive the ball on a kind of a half turn, dribble past a guy, make a defender commit to him and then pass to the vacated space. And and that's just how you get easy balls in behind. His, uh, you showed his passing percentage was unbelievable. That's because he dribbles It's like in the guys, upper so 90s. It's open, ridiculous, yeah. He has so many wide open yeah. lanes because he just beats people on the dribble when he gets the ball. It's a lot like Yunus Musa. He yeah. he should be here. I don't I don't know if I agree that he should start. He would probably it'd be him or Musa. Actually, he'd probably start over Musa for me. Yeah, um, yeah. But he should definitely be in the squad without a question. So yep, yep. a comment in the chat kind of alludes to a comment that you made there about how some of the players may not buy in to the mm-hmm. way Bert Halter is playing. So Stick Piano mentions here, you know, I feel a lot of the players based in the larger European leagues don't respect Bert Halter's system. Do you think that that's something as well where players have basically told him or 
expressed in a way that he can understand that they're like, this is a, this system doesn't make sense to me. I don't like it. Like I don't like the way that I have to play in it. Mm-hmm. Is that something, Tobes, or is that more of a I, um... exception? I think it's that's something that happens in international football everywhere. You know, Kevin yeah. De Bruyne came out and was really upset with how the Belgium coach is handling things. Yep. And you don't know if that's a lot of the times the coaches try to implement simpler systems because you only get a few training sessions. Um, so I think maybe there's some frustration with that. There's also been frustration. People saying that Greg picks too complicated systems that people don't learn fast enough. Unless you're uh, Tyler he, Adams. You know, he, uh, <laughs> he comes out and plays some weird... Uh, we saw it in the first half against Honduras. He played a 5-2-2-1, two, two, but then the two central so midfielders stupid. were like yeah. clearing wide. So he basically, it was just like a giant circle, and we gave the entire middle of the field there. And then at halftime, yeah. we subbed out three people and completely changed the formation because it was a... Yeah, it was, the, it was the duck duck goose formation. I yeah, think. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it um, was absolutely wild. Like, so I like look, some I, yeah. That, yeah. I'll say this. Um, if you haven't yet, there's a series on Amazon Prime uh, uh, Fever Pitch that's a four-episode distillation of the first, like, five seasons of the Prem League. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, Sir Alex Ferguson, his first five, six years at Man United were atrocious. Atrocious. Like, he was on the verge of getting sacked career over. Everybody hates it when it's not working, but you're a genius when it does, mm-hmm. right? So it's easy for these armchair quarterback keyboard warriors to be like, oh, you know, his system's terrible. It's like, uh, you know, I used to get pissed, uh, you know, as a as a filmmaker going out with people to movies where they're like, I really hated the cinematography and I'd have to hold my tongue because they weren't talking about the cinematography. <laughs> they were talking about the production design or something else. And they're just pulling words out of the ether. And I think that that happens in soccer all the time. Like, oh, his formation's wonky. I don't actually know if... If, uh, if you know what a formation means. Now, now that's not me gatekeeping, uh, although it sounds that way, but it's just me allowing for for the fact that, you know, it's easy, talk is cheap, right? And so that that comes out. And and if it was working, you know, he'd be hailed as a genius. And and there's a lot of aspects of of Burhalter's system. I mean, his his stubbornness, you, you got to respect it because that's that's the stubbornness that that Sir Alex had, right? In the face of years of of, of not having any success whatsoever. Um, so, you know, the problem is, is that there reaches a line of demarcation where the people above Greg cannot cannot stop can no longer ignore the the pitchfork mob, right? And and the goal is always to to transcend that or stay ahead of that inertia and and you know, his stubbornness may may end up being his Achilles heel, because unless unless this thing starts paying dividends very, very quickly, um, you know, the 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 it's going to get that much louder. The the voices that that are sort of reaching, grasping for th- for straws to sort of deride the man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So looking at the last group for the United States, we look at the forwards. We've, we've added we've added uh, one from the midfield in there for mm-hmm. you, Tobes. Yeah. Were you, were you were you happy with some of these picks? Like again, you mentioned it right off the top. Like there's not a lot of natural strikers in here. Um, it's it's really a lot of you know they're forwards, sure they're wingers, they're different pieces that play up top, play an, an aggressive attacking type play. But I don't see a, a out and out striker that that's really going to be able to go in there and and be the mm-hmm. guy mm-hmm. in these big games. Tobes, what, what is your first thought? Uh, it's it's actually again very similar with the starting three. If, if it was what I would pick, which would be Brendan Aronson, Ricardo Pepe, and Tim Weah. Um, yeah. Keep in mind, Pulisic is currently injured. He'll probably be a super sub against Mexico. He, he's practiced you know, less than a week, um, so that's why he's not listed as a starter. If that was the starting three, I'd be very happy. I think Pepe, you know, everyone's hoping he really can be that number nine for us. He had a great window last time, had a great window before that. Um, he only has like four caps, but you know, 18-year-old superstar from FC Dallas. Going to be going to... Uh, Europe very soon, rumors of Wolfsburg, rumors of lots of different clubs, but he is it. It is just him. If he gets yeah. injured or is at, he's an 18-year-old out of form, we, there's no backup plan here because you look at the backups and you get Paul Ariola, Greg's guy. He just works super hard, but when the ball's at it, you know, I, I feel bad making fun of Paul Ariola because he he runs so hard. He's, incre- he's an incredible defender, but just when we were trying to build – and you pass the ball to him, it just you gave away possession. It dies. It's that yeah, it simple. Dies. It dies. Mm-hmm. Jesus Ferreira, who is an interesting player, he's had a good season for FC Dallas. Greg said he was a striker. He's not. He's played as a number ten <laughs> behind Pepe the entire season. So yep. I don't know. I don't know what the deal with that is. Um, 
who, who am I? Uh, Christian Roldan and, and Christian Pulisic. Roldan, he's an interesting one. He's always been great in MLS, but he hasn't done anything for us. So mm -hmm. maybe he'll change that. I don't think he'll see the field. And then Pulisic. I'm worried about Pulisic because, like I said, I think we're going to get pressed and get scored on early by Mexico. And yep. Pulisic is going to come on as, a, as an injured super stub with 20 minutes left, and we're going to be down or tied. And the broader U.S. fan base only knows this guy's name, and they think he's going to come in and be an absolute superhero, yep. save the game. And if he doesn't, which is completely within the realm of possibilities for us to lose the game, he could come on, be ineffective. He could come on and just get like injured again, fouled, tackled. Yep. That's what they're going to be doing to him. Absolutely. He is going to get roasted in the media again for something that's not really his fault. <laughs> and I'm, I'm worried. I'm, I don't have a good feeling about this Mexico game. I'm worried about Christian. I should say he's incredibly talented, probably the most talented player we have. His style doesn't really suit CONCACAF that well. Nope. Um, but we have seen him have great performances for us. Not so much this cycle, but um, in the previous cycle, he was kind of our only shining light. So I hope he proves me wrong. He has the talent to do it, but I just think it's going to be hard when you're injured. You only get 20 minutes. Your team might not even have the ball for those 20 minutes, and yeah, they're going to yeah. be trying to kill you. Absolutely. Any thoughts on the, on the forwards there, Jeffrey, for the United States? I, everything everything that, that Tobe said. I mean, <laughs> the lack the lack of a, of a true number nine is crazy. Um, Where's Daryl DK would have been my pick, I think. He's in form. Uh, he has eight goals in his last 10 for Orlando City. Yeah, he dropped DK. off. Yeah, I would have brought Josh Sargent just because I, I love having him on your squad just for <laughs> yeah. just for shenanigans. Um, but listen, or or Josie, I mean, let's let's not. Uh, this, I'm not joking. I mean, uh, I the Jesus Ferreira and the Pepe shout is a really interesting one because they how are you going to put them on the field in a way where they're not directly contradicting how they play for their club side? That just seems yeah. so insanely stupid. Um, and yeah, I mean. Eh, there's not a lot of room in a 4-3-3 for these kind of players. And mm -hmm. uh it just it seems it seems like you're either looking at a formation that plays to their strengths and then kind of abandons the sort of roving six that 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 Berhalter likes so much, or mm -hmm. you're kind of square peg round holing them. And uh I I, I think you're gonna get the latter, which means that mm -hmm. your attacking power is a smash and grab side. And 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 you don't want to play smash and grab against Mexico. Maybe you can play smash and grab against Jamaica, but you want to have some some repeatable kind of sy systematic sort of processes in a game against El Tri. And I just I think you're going you're going into a, a gun, you're taking a knife into a gunfight on the with that one. Yeah, it's 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 going to be interesting to see how it plays. We're obviously going to see tonight. Tobe's going to be an mm -hmm. absolute mess. I'm sure he'll yep. let us know how he's doing between. Oh yeah, the chat. <laughs> That's gonna be amazing. Um, before we before we before we move on to Canada, I do want to talk about the two games for for the states. And there is one good question call. in the chat that I want to bring up. Uh, mm -hmm. So offside twice has a, has a good comment here. Has the USA shifted too hard towards young potential superstars because it helps the brand? Good call. The last three to four years of the U.S. system seem to have happily ostracized leaders and experienced players. Tobes, I would love to hear what your thought is on that. I think you have to go player by player on who got ostracized. I think a lot of the people who got cut out didn't have the talent and are just actively worse players than than the mm. players we are calling up now. But I, I do agree that there are some um, distinct players that I'm not sure we needed to get rid of when we did. And there are some like Legette who are sticking around that don't need to. Fair. That's good. Fair. Nice clean answer. I love it. I love it. Okay. So it's a good yeah, it's a good it's a good shout. It's a good shout. I, I mean, I, I keep wanting to call offside Dwight his 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 human name, but I'm going to protect his <laughs> his anonymity. But it's a it's a good shout. Yeah. yeah, let's let's not dox the man. Okay. No, no, no. I do like what I do like what Stick Piano is saying. The Mexico result here, I, I can't put it here. Out, I'll, but... I'll 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 bring it up here. So it's Stick Piano added in. Uh, Mexico result will come down to Tyler Adams' ability to protect the ball and distribute to mm -hmm. other midfielders or wide players in positions where they won't give up the ball. That is a lot to ask of Adams. But <laughs> sure I, is. <laughs> but I think, but I think he's the key. It's a good Adam, comment. I would agree. It's no secret that Adams is probably the most important player for our team. Um, 
he, he was immense for us. Even in the Canada game, I don't know if we saw how many times Alfonso Davies skipped back the skipped past the fullback only for Adams to recover in time to, to destroy on him, him. And, yeah, and yeah, stop yeah. the ball from coming into the box. And then the one, so like I felt bad for Tyler because he did that maybe ten times against Alfonso Davies. And then the one time he didn't get over, it was a goal. So, <laughs> well, I mean. He's not the only one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Alfonso Davies was 1v2 in those situations against whichever yeah. fullback and, and Tyler Adams. But the way he plays for us is immense. Um, the way he's going to build, especially with defenders that can't really build. It, exactly. I'm really hoping we just kind of launch it because our midfield is really athletic. If we get them into duels, Tyler Adams, Weston McKinney, Nunes Musa into, into those duels, I think we can win them against Absolutely. Mexico's, you know, if they play Hector Herrera and Guardado, who are both, 30 plus that, mm -hmm. that's what I want to see. Um, just trying to win those duels in the midfield and then spring and spring attacks from there. So that brings us said, right you into know, the, yeah, oh, go ahead, Jeffrey. Well, it's funny because Mexico almost seems like the, the U S men's national team that is holding on to their assets a bit too long, mm -hmm. right? Holding on to the Bradleys and the Josies and the DeAndres and et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera, a bit past their sell by date. I do think you win the midfield battle. I do think those two players are starting for Matt for L tree. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I don't think Tata is going to take a lot of chances because if you think Greg's under some heat in the media, Tata's, you know, increased he's that yeah. tenfold. Well, they um, can't lose to us three times in a row. That <laughs> they absolutely cannot. They cannot. So they're coming out with their veterans. They're coming out in the style that's made El Tree El Tree. It could be to mm -hmm. their detriment. You know, if Tyler, if Tyler has himself a lights out game, um, you know, he's the, he's the, he's the straw that, that stirs your drink mm -hmm. without question. Yeah. So I was just going to say, it just brings us right into that conversation naturally about the games that are coming up. So tonight, mm -hmm. the States plays Mexico. Mm -hmm. You're looking at a, a strong squad coming from Mexico. And as you mentioned, the, you know, the Mexican manager is under an incredible amount of pressure. I don't think mm -hmm. people realize the expectations that are put on Mexico. They're basically told, uh, win everything. And if you yep. lose anything, uh, that's not acceptable. Mm -hmm. it's, yep. it's They're considered in their country to be the powerhouse of this, this, uh, this conference, this this region mm -hmm. and uh mm -hmm. they expect to see it every time you've talked a bit about where you think the americans are going to be able to do well where do you think the mexicans are the most dangerous tonight i'll, I'll start with you uh again tobes just because this is the american team yeah, and the, you did all the research yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the quick scouting report for mexico is that their front three is horrifying you got chuck yeah. Zano, raul jimenez and tecatito corona who are three <sighs> of the most dynamic forwards in you know it's clearly the best amalgamation of three and they are all you know, staking the claim, maybe not, they're probably not, but they're all, you know, top one, two at their position. Um, so they're horrifying. The back line's going to have a hard time. It's going to be up to Tyler Adams to help cover all those people. You get into oh, their yeah. midfield. Edson Alvarez at the six is in, uh, very good for them, a lot like Tyler Adams, but then their dual eights are a bit of a problem. As you said, yep. Hector Herrera definitely will start, but he's, he's getting older. He's kind of a bit more creative. He doesn't cover a lot of ground. And if they play Guardado next to him, who's kind of the same player, their midfield is going to be very slow. So you've seen Tata go back and forth between Guardado and then people like Charlie Rodriguez or Luis Romo or some of the kind of younger, faster guys they try to get in there. I don't know what he's going to do. I think if he plays Guardado, it's a mistake. Um, I, I he, think he if might. he plays the kids, it's a mistake because those kids are, are like excited yeah. little puppies. I mean, they, not, and, there's no yeah. good option. Yeah. You know, I think there really is the midfield battle no matter what. Without question. Yeah. And then you get to their defense. Against us, Nestor Rajo is one of their best center backs. Is suspended. He will he will be there against Canada, so that's good for us. And then another one of their center backs is um, currently injured, so they're going to be playing Hector Moreno and probably Dominguez from from Genoa. So so they're kind of hurt there. And then their fullbacks are getting the most flame in their media. They're both great attacking and they're both poor defending, which mm -hmm. I think is why we've seen Canada match up against Mexico so well because Mexico has so much strength in the wings, and these fullbacks yeah. cannot deal with it. We don't have yeah. quite as good of a matchup there with Gia Reyna is currently injured and Pulisic's not um, fit. So I'm not sure we'll take advantage of it quite as much. But I think their defense is shaky. Their midfield is creative, but not very athletic. But then their front three is horrifying. Horrifying. Yeah. Yeah. So here's Absolutely. here's the ultimate question then. I'm going to leave it to you guys to to let me know what you think is going to happen. I, I We haven't really done predictions when you guys have been on here. And before. I don't. I refuse because I haven't done them yet this whole cycle. So <laughs> I'm not jinxing so, it now. Yeah. Je Jeffrey's going to yeah. skip on it. But Tobes, if you were mm -hmm. if you were comfortable doing a prediction, where would you uh, where would you, what do you think is going to happen tonight? I mean, my I want to say we're going to win. I have a really bad feeling about this window. <laughs> I, I really do. Ran Gia Rand has been our best player when he's been there he's injured we don't have desk we don't have brooks Pulisic's not healthy 
Greg's in charge. I I really have a bad feeling. I just I can't shake the idea that we're going to lose or draw to Mexico and then draw to Jamaica away and leave with one point and and suddenly be in fourth place because Panama beat someone and just be. Mm-hmm. I, I Jamaica... have a stinking pit in my stomach that that's what's going to happen. I'm going to predict a one-one draw. I think, like I said, Mexico presses us, um, gets that goal, and I think we get a set piece. That's prop. That's a good shout. Jamaica is a scary proposition because they're a lot tougher to play against than 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 most people think. Mm-hmm. Based on especially the beginning of this cycle, I mean, they found some kind of shape. They're still a god awful mess, but they're not. They're not going to make it easy for you, and they're mm-hmm. and they're going to go studs out, and they're going to look to hurt you. You know, they're like a trapped animal at this point, and uh, that's scary. That's a scary proposition. Uh, you know, we 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 overlooked that that game with Jamaica mm-hmm. away to Jamaica, and it and it ended up biting us in the ass. And I I have a feeling that they're going to play spoiler to a lot of teams. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And that's the when you go away to Jamaica, it's a very different experience. It's it's a completely different. And you see it when we go there. It's like oh, you know, it's just Jamaica, right? And Canada, yeah, came yeah. Out and we didn't look good. We looked like no. The we pitch were... is the pitch is an abomination. Yeah, like, it really it's just, is. It, yeah, like it's an abomination and then you know it, they don't water it so it's like a really slow pitch and it's super hot and all the dark art shenanigans you know it's a trapped mm-hmm. animal right they you know if mm-hmm. you're if you're gonna lose a fight you bite right you start biting it's better mm-hmm. than losing the fight so yeah do you have any yeah. what are your main concerns when you look at, at jamaica in terms of the way that they match up against the states toves do you have any specific concerns or is it really just enduring what you expect to be a tough conca calf away match Jamaica is impossible to predict. They have rumors yeah. about who, which players are coming that change every cycle. So I suppose every this time, Mikael Antonio's going to be there. You know, I've heard that every single time, but like, apparently this time he's finally going to be there. I've heard Leon Bailey might be there. I don't think Ethan Pinnock's going to be there, but yeah. you never know who yeah. you're going to play against. But what's interesting about Jamaica is since they never get to practice with each other, it's almost like as the cycle goes on, they've had one more the games are their practice. So they've had exactly more, they've had more training sessions now. They're getting I think they're ramping up and I think it's gonna be probably their best chance or their best performance is gonna come against us and the and they're gonna keep getting better and we're gonna to have to be at our best to to win that game. I one hundred percent agree. So Tobes, prediction for the Jamaica <laughs> I'm gonna throw you I'm gonna throw you to the wolves. <laughs> I I will. I might try to do that after the Mexico game. If I do it now, I'm going to predict a nil-nil, disgusting <laughs> yeah, game that no one's fast, having yeah. fun. But yeah. I think once I see how we play against Mexico, I'll have a lot better idea of if we're going to be able to control the ball and and you know do something against Jamaica, or if 100%. it's just going to be people punching each other in the midfield and the ball sitting off the sideline, no one paying attention. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. stay tuned to Tobes Laroni on the old Twitter. <laughs> And see how he handles the next few days, guys. You may be yeah, able to yeah. see it. That prediction might change. Count deleted, you know, weird. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that was great, guys. We I know we spent, you know, a good hour going over kind of the American yeah, team yeah. and the matchups there. That was really in-depth. I know we kind of went off the road a couple of times, but I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I love Let's... when I say I'm only going to do this for an hour and then we get to uh, spend the whole hour on the U.S. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know who's at fault, though, is it's me. Mm-hmm. So if you if you, you yeah, need to yeah. send the wolves, this is where you send them. I, I'll give you the nice. phone number. You just call me and yell or whatever. Nice. nice. Uh, Expect a call from my wife. She's going to she's probably going to call you. But no, let's do this. Let's do oh Canada. God. All right. Mm-hmm. Canada puts mm-hmm. out their roster uh, and, and in a format that we can't stand. But what, let's go through it in a similar way. We'll go through the goal sure. tender, the goalkeepers, defenders, midfield, and forwards. Um, so I don't think there's any big surprises here on the goalkeeping side, Jeffrey. It's the it's the guys that we expected to be selected. Do you have any concerns? Yeah. No, I mean, talk? Milan Boran, Canada super fan, cheerleader extraordinaire is back. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I mean, the my, my only concern is, does he get the start? Probably. Does he deserve it over Maxime Crepo, who has been lights out? Probably not. Um, that's a wonderful problem to have. Um, I don't think James Pentemis is going to see a minute on the pitch for this uh, for this cycle. Um, but number one and number two are fairly interchangeable. I mean, uh, uh, if I had to, I would still go with with Milan. He deserves it. Uh, you know, he he's our guy. But if he's shaky for this uh, for this first round, then I think uh, he he comes out for for Maxime for for the the Mexico tie. 
I mean, the advantage is we get Costa Rica first. They're no slouch, but they're not El Tree. So we, we do have the opportunity for a course correction. If it had been the other way around, I think um, I'd have a totally different view going in. No surprises in the goalkeeper. Uh, uh, and, and the best thing about goal, the goalkeeper position for Canada is that after these three, the there's no drop in quality like to like number seven. We've got seven starting goalkeepers that are all ready to take the mantle. Um, it's fantastic. I mean, Dane St. Clair is not is had didn't get called up and he's worthy of 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 being on this list. So it's an embarrassment of riches. Um, and our number one and our number two are untouchable at this point. I mean, either either or it really is take your pick. Um, so there's not much to say there. Tobes, any comments on the on the Canadian picks for the for their keepers? Any shocks? Probably not. Uh, not really. It was kind of interesting to see. Um, I didn't know they had anyone behind Borjan or Borjan. Um, so to mm-hmm. see Kripo, uh come into the Gold Cup, make some big save against get saves against Mexico was was pretty nice. I don't. Yeah. If I'm wrong correctly, Borjan is the is the captain. Uh, uh, yeah, he does. He captain. wears the armband on. Yeah, he's he's Arcation. the captain on. Well, I mean, so I, he's the he's the hype man. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd probably expect him to start then. Just like yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. Yeah, I've always appreciated his energy back there. I mean, um, he's he's just you can tell that he's engaged. He's on guys. He's reminding them of their coverage. He's reminding them of things that are changing. Mm-hmm. It's not. I love a keeper like that in, in in football. It's a something that's really. If I'm a defender, I'd love to have a guy behind me that extra eyes, that extra information, constant mm-hmm. communication. Yeah. I would hate to have a keeper who just sits back behind me and is is quiet in his duty. I, and I, then I, yells at you when you do something wrong. Absolutely. Like, yeah. just well, tell me, you know? tell me where I need to be. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 sir. Like you yeah. scream at me. I feel the same way about sound guys on set. Cause traditionally they're very, very quiet. And you only find out you had crappy sound when you look at your dailies a day later. And I always say, no, 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 no. Stop the take. Tell me it's shit. That way I know I need another one. Right. Yeah. So I, yeah. I feel the same way. Um, moving on to defenders, I mean, listen, when, 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 uh, on my own show, when we got EK, uh, I turned to Mr. Kansok, Mitch Tierney, and I said, can, can Herdman start concentrating on defenders now? You know, <laughs> since we have, since we have every forward, like let's recruit some defenders. And Mitch kind of took me to task because we, with this, this crop of defenders, you know, we're, we love to deride on them now, which is such a weird thing for for a Canadian men's national team. We were just building defenders and we had zero forwards for 30 something years. But but uh, we've conceded almost nothing like we are. We've been pretty stout and solid at the back. Um, so, the, you know, they're not showstoppers. The names aren't showstoppers, but we've got, you know, our center back depth always gives me hives. Always. Mm-hmm. It will perpetually give me hives. Um, until we get a, a certain uh, Fiaco Tamori uh, makes a makes a switch over, but uh, we've got deputies on on our 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 our, our wing backs, both in terms of uh, you know in terms of attacking and and defensive news, um, and I think that that's that can't be undervalued, um, you know, because of. The, the elephants in the room named Tejon Buchanan and Alfonso Davies, right? So if we want, if we want to do the three, five, two and have those two at wing back, um, that's fine. But even in a three, five, two, we can get Sam Adekube, you know, and uh, I don't, I'm, I almost thought for sure he was called up, but I guess he wasn't. Where's Rich? Oh, there he is. Yeah. No, Richie's in there. So yeah, yeah, of course, Richie's in there. Um, so, you know, in terms of, in terms of adaptability at the back, in terms of being able to play the the four two one one that we've been sort of sort of using at, at certain places, even a even a you know bog standard four four two proper football styles, and the three five two that's my favorite formation that seems to be causing chaos, we have the personnel to be an attack minded side and a defensive minded side in terms of in terms of our player availability. So I'm very very happy with that back line. Um, I mean, how can you not be? Yeah, I think it, it's it's reflected in the chat there. People are mentioning, you know, Johnson and Larea have really been standouts. They've seen them. Play mm-hmm. really, Johnson, really well. I, I I love him so much. I mean, <laughs> it's it's All Star Johnson. I I I love All Star Johnson so much. He's he's my guy. Uh, I don't know if you heard that quote, but he was doing an interview and and he and he said, 
you know, it's not like there's a huge drop off between number one to number two. And then he's correcting himself. He's like, actually, there may be a pretty huge drop off. <laughs> I love that humility, though. Like, there's something that's that's great about a player who understands mm. where they fit and understands yeah. their value, but also has the confidence to have a little joy in, in the idea that, you know, I'm getting to play with a Davies. He's on another level. And I'm going to yeah. make a joke about yeah. how I'm just a, it's a tiny drop off, just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, I mean, he's a, he's a superstar, like for, at, for his age to, to, to be as, as just unshakable at the back. I mean, he makes some questionable tackles sometimes because he's aggressive, but that's what you want. I, I want, especially when you've got, you know, some of the, some of the propensity for brain farts that come out of uh, Cornelius and, and Henry as our, as our starting center backs, because you're guaranteed at least one um, per game from either of them. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, listen, it's not, it's not a sexy back line, especially at center back depth and, and mm -hmm. pundits will consistently point to that as a, as an error, as a weakness. When you look at our midfield and you look at our forwards, of course it is. Um, but I, I, I don't think that that it's deserving of the of the snark that it's getting, uh, and I do think that that we've got it we've got it we've got it under wraps there. You know? What I do what I do enjoy, uh, Jeffrey, is at the beginning you talked about how you were the snarky one. You were then put in your place, and then came to the conclusion that the snarkiness needs to stop. I loved it. I loved <laughs> yeah, it. it was a journey. Well, I mean, I'm not I'm not going up against Mitch Tierney. Mitch Tierney's <laughs> Mr. Cansock. What he <laughs> says. When he says something, you agree with him. It's yeah. otherwise you face his wrath forever. Uh, Tobes, what do you, what do you think of our? I was back just going to say, Tobes, we've let you sit there for a while. What do you think of the the selection on the back end? Uh, from an outside American perspective, the story of the defense is obviously Alistair Johnston, who's you know Canadian. Miles Robinson, kind of if you're an American yeah. fan, that's the equivalent. Absolutely, super Absolutely. strong, good call. One of the best defenders in MLS. Um, probably your best center back at this moment. Richie Larea, who's been great on either fullback slot. But then the story past that becomes um, Herdman is so good tactically. He always gets it right where to set the line, where when to press and what yeah. formation to play. That mm -hmm. it kind of... It, I'm not going to say these other players are weak, but he's getting more out of them than their talent probably... Uh, the, Very well More played. out of them than they are talented. Which makes you wonder if Canada did have incredible... You know, a bunch of really super good center backs, like what would Herman be able to get out of them? Yep. Um, I, I had that question, but it's I, really I, a concern that's a great show. It's just more like Herman's going to get it tactically right to kind of cover for the other defenders weaknesses. And yeah. Yeah. And probably. we haven't even talked about Kamal Muller, who has also been a revelation mm -hmm. for, for CF Montreal. Um, but no, I, I agree with you. I think that that's a perfect summation. He's he, they're playing, they're playing above their skill set because of the tactical assuredness and the fact that our midfield has some absolute monsters mm -hmm. in it. So that that's a pretty good segue. I mean, I, you know, let, let's 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 I mean, what what are you going to do? You've got like you know, you're talking about a situation where Piet probably doesn't get the lion's share of minutes by consequence of the fact that you've now got a partnership in Eustachio and K. That's your first choice partnership. And that also leaves Jonathan Osorio on the outside looking in. And he's 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 Mr. Ken Men's national team at this point. That midfield is stacked. I mean, Atiba Hutchinson's the man's 38 years old, and he's 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 kicking ass and taking names. Like it is a beautiful midfield. Um, you know, they're you know, Sam Sam Piet unfortunately is seeing his minutes reduced. Uh, which is what I said maybe a minute ago. Also, seeing his minutes reduced, that inflames the passions of my you know Canadian heart. But they're not, they're not. We're not putting them above Eustachio, Hutchinson, K. <laughs> at this at this juncture, um, it's a great problem to have. And and to your point, that tactical adaptability, right? Like you've got you've got the pieces to play in a in a bunch of different ways mm -hmm. and and i think that that's pretty terrific and what i was going to say before we we jump to you tobes and, and see what you think as well about the midfield but what i think is really nice as much as piet is not getting those minutes he's a great player to bring on late when you're ahead or you're you're needing that that solid kind of midfield presence to come in and go absolutely we're going to finish this we're going to boss the midfield and he comes in and he really seems comfortable with that role 
coming in off the bench, loads of energy, you know, and, mm-hmm. and I, I don't know if he's bought into the role. He probably doesn't like not starting, but my yeah, goodness, what does? a guy yeah. to pull off, <laughs> right? Like, I, I love that. You come in and he's just like, all right, we've got this really creative, powerful midfield. And now, you know, we're, we're going to add more power, a little bit more defending to it and, and feel really, really solid. It, it's just a nice feeling. Mm-hmm. Tobes, when you look at that midfield, are, are you feeling the same way? Is that the, 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 is, it, is it a scary midfield as an American fan? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's scary. It's certainly very good. I'm not going to say it's not good. To me, Eustachio yeah. is um, much is better than all the rest of these midfielders that you have. I don't know if you agree with that, but to me, he's the clear standout. He is a deep lying six who can also yep. and he played the eight two, but he, uh, you know, we have Tyler Adams and there's Edson Alvarez from Mexico. None of those guys can pass quite like. Eustachio. Eustachio's vision yeah. creativity is, is a bit above. Um, he's not as you know physically gifted as Adams and Alvarez, but he's a different kind of player. So I, I like he's a different him. kind of player. Yeah, I think he's uh, I think he's above the rest of these guys. Who to me, they all kind of seem like they're quality good players. You can start be confident in them, but I'm not sure I consider the rest of them, you know, Hector Herrera level game changers or Weston McKinney level game changers. That's fair. I agree with that. I, I think that's fair. Um, I think I think you're I think Mac um, is a lot better than 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 that suggests. I mean, Mark Anthony K, his role is so interesting when he mm-hmm. when he plays for Canada, especially when he plays with Eustachio, when he lines up with Eustachio. He's got he's got a freedom, but he's also got a responsibility and he's not afraid to go in to go right up the gut, which, mm-hmm. you know, uh, it's again, I'm going to mention TFC, but they seem to be allergic to driving up the middle this season. And when you're there live, it's the most frustrating thing in the world. So I love seeing when when the men's national team plays, they're not averse to that, especially considering the strength we have on, on the wings that mm-hmm. you've also got, you've got a dangerous player making late runs, you know, kind of mopping it up, Scholesy styles. Uh, uh, that's where he, got, he gets his goals for the men's national team. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. The, these aren't, unless you're a hardcore uh, uh, soccer nut, especially here in Canada, these names aren't mm-hmm. going to strike fear in the hearts of, of the of the opponents, and I think that's low key an advantage. To be completely honest mm-hmm. with you, like you know, like like you know, let's mark Eustachio, and and you know, Mark Anthony K is going to destroy you, or, mm-hmm. or you know, like let's leave Atiba Hutchinson alone because he's thirty eight years old, and you know, here comes uh uh. uh uh, 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 Oso, uh, with you know, yeah. a, a whopper from outside the box. So, I, I so, do yeah, feel like I yeah. disrespected Osorio a bit, um, because I, I, I mean, he's used thing. to it. I, yeah. I underestimated him, and then he came into the gold cup and, and bossed that yeah. field against us. It was, you know, it wasn't I mean, look at Mexico, field, he, he they, they yeah. underestimate him, and he puts one past him at the Azteca for, for, for all, <laughs> for all yeah. sense of purpose. And it's a bit, it's always fun for me to see how. Herdman gets Osorio and Eustachio into the same lineup without uh-huh. conceding the midfield battle. Cause I, you know, I feel like if you get those two kind of creative players in, normally you're, you know, Mexico might do the same thing and then they're going to lose the midfield battle, but yeah, Herdman yeah. finds a way to not do it. So yeah, every yeah. time, every time. Oh, so, so, so he's, you know, it, it's the same for, for, for that club that I won't mention for fear of offside twice destroying me later, but you know, it's the, he's got the same issue at TFC at the club that I won't mention where he's, he, you know, he's a Swiss army knife. We all know what his best position is, but because he's so flexible, you can put him into other places. He, you're going to get 75% also, but sometimes that's enough, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and he's also willing to do that for club and country, which I think is, is a skill strength. Let's get to their forwards because they're devastating. Oh, I mean, yeah, let's do it. De- it's devastating. I, this is, what, this what is the favorite say? part for us. Like, if oh, I'm, yeah. If yeah. I, you know, this is the part where I get to sit back and go, oh, you know, the forwards for us all. <laughs> I mean, Goodness, this is, uh, this is tough choice. This is devastating. <laughs> this, is, this is devastating. Absolutely devastating. Uh, uh, you know, you can make the argument does does Kava deserve to be here based on this the form that he's in for, for club and country? But we've got E.K. Ugbo to deputize for him, you know, so and 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 I, I think uh, I think he's, you know, uh, if you look at at, at what E.K. Uh, Ugbo has been doing, um, he's a proper nine. Is he taking all of Kava's minutes right now? Uh, I always want to see Kava on this squad because CONCACAF brings out the best in the guy. Uh, so sometimes you have to just put form aside and say this is the guy you want on your roster when you're down by a goal in a CONCACAF tie. Um, I'm excited to see what EK can do, uh, but 
Oh, it's Ugbo. Thanks, Tedium. <laughs> I, I, said, I think I said. I think I said Ugbo. The I've first been time. struggling with it, honestly. Every time I'm like, ah, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I said it wrong, and then I get it right. Yeah, I think. I, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm gonna just do it until it until it catches. But it'll I, click I eventually. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, this is this is scary. This is scary. And 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 you know, Tejon and Fonzie and Kyle and J Dave. <laughs> So here's what are you going to do, guys? Yeah. Here's a question. Because obviously we know who's going to start. We know who's going to get the majority of the minutes with this group. We, mm-hmm. we, f- we feel, as you can tell, Tobes, we're, we're feeling a little bit, you know, blessed with riches in this particular mm-hmm. position right now, um, which is not something we're used to. And we're, we're certainly reveling in it. And uh, that, that's certainly something to talk about. But do you think uh, Ugo is going to get a start? Is he going to get a start? Is he going to get some time? Are we going to see this guy at any, any time during this window, or is this uh, an opportunity for, for him to acclimatize, get used to the team, get used to the tactics, know what uh, a window uh, in Canada during November is like, those sorts of things? Yeah, it's. I'm going to be really interested to see what Herdman does. I think if it was a three-game window, Ugbo probably gets He gets start. minutes, yeah, um, yeah. I think he'll get minutes probably regardless. I think he'll get minutes. But I, yeah. I don't know if he gets to start with two games because you. I don't know if you want to start him in the first game and the second game is against Mexico. Yeah. So I feel like it's going to be kind of hard to get him a start. I don't know what Herbie's yeah, going not. to do with this lineup. There's too much. You have to leave someone on the bench. You have to leave multiple people on the bench. And I actually don't know what he, who... It also depends on the formation he's going to play. There's so many different factors. I don't know who he's going to do, but whoever's on the bench should deserves to be starting and will be devastating when they come in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think that it comes down to, uh, you know, who... Does anybody get a knock in the Costa Rica game? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, does anybody, d- does Bayern call Herdman's hotel room and say, you know, you're not starting Fonzie for the Mexico game after the Costa Rica game, which is something that we'll never hear about, but could come into play. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it is very much uh, what you just said, you know, who gets to start for, for tonight versus Costa Rica? What is the result? And is everybody at a hundred percent following that game? Uh, and I'm I'm remiss to even make a prediction as to what happens until I see that lineup, right? Mm-hmm. Like, do we see Tejon and Fonzie start tonight, or do we see one or the other? Um, you know, and that doesn't even get into what you know who's our who's our front. I mean, I think Laren starts tonight. Uh, I don't think there's any argument to that. But does that mean that we've got two up front in the preferred situation where we've got Laren as the number nine and Jay Dave sort of as a second striker, which is where he likes to play in the pocket? Or do we save that for Mexico? And maybe, I mean, again, saving always gives me pause. I don't think you save anything. I think you go for broke and then you deal with what happens. So, I, I again, I need to see the lineup, but... but <laughs> no, Oh, is that a cat? a cat? Yeah, yeah it is a cat. cat. Nice. Cat nice. sighting. For those for those who are listening on the podcast, if you want to see cats, be sure to tune in at twitch.tv slash scooter. <laughs> put the time put the timestamp in there so you yeah. know exactly where the cat showed up. But yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I want um, funny Mike. I wanted, I wanted to shout out Kyle Laren really quickly because to yeah. me, he is the most disrespected player in the US community at large. I, hmm. like everyone talks about everyone's so scared of uh, Davies as they should be. They're so scared of David because he plays at Lille. Tejon Buchanan shown flashes. I have no idea why no one talks about Kyle Laren, who scored a ridiculous amount of goals over in Turkey, the same league yeah. that we claim is strong because Yedlin plays there. Well, if because strong, Orlando, because in or, because his performances in Orlando left a lot to be desired. The way he the way he left Orlando left a lot to be desired. Um, but he's and, just so good. He always scores. Oh, he's so I, good. He's I don't so understand good. why we don't why we're not scared of him in the same way we're scared of David and Davies. Yeah. He's, a he's a solid player. He's a solid player, and and I actually I would say he's better than a solid player. I'd say that he's a he's a he's a B. He'd start a B for plus us. If, he was our, if he was level on player the US, in Bakakev, he would yeah. start as our striker. I think he, no doubt I think he's an I think he's an A player. Uh, oh, I I don't I don't I don't think he's I don't think he's in the seventy fifth percentile. I think he's rounded into into a into a range of a, of an A grade. Yeah. It's scary. Our for our forward line is scary. It's the best problem in the world to have, but it also is going to manifest in some really interesting ways. Um, so the relationships here. that we yeah. I have a question for you, Jared. I wanted to jump in before we before we go too far down the player route, but I wanted to ask because this is kind of a unique situation for Canada. You've tweeted about it. Tobes has seen us talk about it. 
Canada mm-hmm. has decided to bring the teams up to Edmonton, right, for this particular set of games in November, yeah. which is something that the debate has been within in the Canada soccer uh, realm for a long time of do we play in cold? Do we bring play teams into our cold or do we prefer to play in more milder settings, right? And sure. I, for one, am really excited to see us play in cold weather. I'm really excited to see us bring Costa Rica and Mexico up to Edmonton in in in, in November. Jam-packed with loads of fans. We're looking at 50,000 plus at yep. Commonwealth. Is this going to have a big impact on how the game happens. I'm going to go to you first, Jeffrey, on this one, but and then we'll go to Tobes. But okay. is this this environment and the fans going to have a big impact on the result, or is it just something that gets the fan, you know, everyone gets to enjoy it? It's it's a little bit of a story, but at the end of the day, the game is played on the pitch. What do you think? Well, I mean, flag offsides comment about my man, Junior Hoylet, who is an omission uh, due to injury but uh you know what he's saying is very important Mm -hmm. um if you read john molinaro's uh oral history where he goes back to the last time canada made the hex uh and he get i think it was uh craig forrest who who quote in i'm gonna misquote him but he said something to the effect that they all look like abominable snowmen out there in parkas and snow pants and they you know the the weather absolutely had an effect in that cycle um and then if you look at costa rica i think they're leaving they're doing what what Canada did once or twice, which is practicing at home and then coming here like a thief in the night and getting out because they're so afraid of the, of the temperature. So absolutely it's going to have an effect. Will it have an effect on our performance as well as the, is the big question, right? You know, um, was it a worthy sacrifice? Listen, in terms of spreading the love, in terms of getting the game played in front of new people in different markets, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. But if, you know, the goal has to be getting into the World Cup. It can't be a participation medal. And when it becomes an argument between all of that superfluous stuff versus what works best for the team and its performances, that's when I start throwing elbows, right? And of yeah. course, coming from where I am, um, you know, everybody sees it as a Toronto bias. It isn't a Toronto bias. If the team, if there's a competitive advantage to playing on the best playing surface in the country, which was expensive, it's, I mean, that's not in dispute. BMO Field has hybrid cis grass. No one else does. You know, they're playing on turf at, at Commonwealth Stadium. Uh, uh, and the fact that, you know, most a lot of them are coming from Europe and it's a much quicker flight to Toronto from from uh, continental Europe than it is to, to Edmonton. I know that that's, you know, I'm, now we're talking semantics. Like we're talking 45 <laughs> minutes over 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 an hour and something. But but any it, 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 an advantage is an advantage is an advantage. And, and uh you know, I have it on very good authority that uh, two, there were two reasons, two major reasons behind putting these games in, in Edmonton. One was Alfonso wanted it, and two was in as a precursor to the World Cup in 2026. At a certain point, FIFA has to send representatives to these stadiums that that are looking for the upgrades and all the other hoopla that, that needs to be put into place. Canada, that is often public money. So to activate that public money, you have to create certain inertia and getting FIFA in at this early stage and rubber stamping Commonwealth will lead to funds being unlocked at that public money sphere. So it's an attempt to kind of do that. So so those are both good reasons, but they do not supersede competitive advantage. And that's that's my fear here. Right. Like, um you know, uh, a friend of a friend of my show, a friend uh, uh, should be a friend of all of us, Andre Gazin, G- G- Gagne Ruzik. <laughs> uh, um, you know, he went to Edmonton and during the day, he's like, oh, this is great. This is fantastic. And the second the sun went down, he's like, holy crap, this is cool. <laughs> right. So so, it, you know, it's it's the general the gen it's the general experience. I imagine that 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 everything's good. Yeah. But qualifying for guitar uh, uh, offside. Um, would unlock far more money, but but this is you know they got to start. This is Canada. We got to start getting through this red tape as early as possible. So before any opportunity, yeah. Before we jump to Tobes, I just want to say you're yeah. right on it, Jeff- like Jeffrey, because it's it's yeah. a much more complicated com- conversation when it comes to unlocking public funds. To get oh my god! Done. And when this you is, talk about is, yeah. 
when you talk about Toronto, the, like I've never bought in. Now I'm from Winnipeg, so we all love the you know the the let's make fun of the big smoke, blah 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 blah. But to me, it's always yeah. been a bit of banter. Like at the yeah. end of the day, the facilities are going to dictate where you play, and the yeah. fact that Toronto and and at the end of the day, we're going to talk about public money because this is how it ends up being. The yeah. end of the day, Toronto is a bigger population. There's a bigger demand. There's a larger conversation around getting funds. And that's reflected in everything from street repair to public transit to sports facilities. And this is not a complaint. This is not a Winnipeg going, where's my stadium? This is an honest reflection of just how it works here. And so as a Canadian, I've accepted that. And as much as I would absolutely die to see a game in the World Cup of 2026 in Winnipeg, I'm not Mm -hmm. holding my breath because I understand we have a stadium that's already in debt. It's already got issues with public financing. No one is interested in even having the conversation around providing updates to a stadium that is $110 million in debt and already has repairs because it wasn't built properly. Like I'm not going to go too into depth, but these are the kinds of things you have to get into when you talk about public money. (laughs) Listen, I I mean, it's a social democracy and that it's in itself is an oxymoron, right? So we're consistently (laughs) like sort of fighting against the twin pillars of capitalism and socialism, trying to figure out what the hell we're doing. And we're also a provincial based, uh, based system. So there are differences. I mean, listen, the, uh, the CPL just announced a team in Vancouver and without going into too much detail, Um, the, the general consensus was, well, why not Quebec? Because the CPL doesn't have a team in Quebec yet. And my instant reaction was, you know, if you want to talk about public money shenanigans, Quebec is your number, is your, is your, is your top, uh, 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 is almost the dictionary definition. No, but nothing gets done in Quebec without some kind of government cheddar. And unfortunately activating that government cheddar, there are so many steps and so many hoops you have to jump through. The expectation that it's going to happen as quick as it would in another province is impossible. It's yeah. not possible. The yeah. whole the whole zeitgeist there is based around maximizing government cheddar, and therefore the 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 avenue to access is that much harder. And sports is a money pit. I mean, there are pl- there are so you could you could light it on fire, and that might be a better way to spend the money than to put it into into a into a sports league. So you know, there there you go, right? Like. Getting getting these stadiums up to scratch. I mean, even BMO isn't going to escape a multi-million dollar, tens of million dollar renovation to get up to, to scratch for the World Cup in 2026. It's a massive cost outlay. And, you know, at the, what, a month later, it's vapor. I mean, unless unless you're, you're, you've are you booked it for this and that soccer event up until the end of time. It's vapor, man. There, there are stadiums that were built for World Cups in the last 10 years that, it, that the nature has now taken back over again because, you know, they spent all that money and then there's nothing there. So, so life finds a way. Like it, it's not, it's never as easy as, as, as it's suggested in, in the hot takes. Um, and uh, yeah. Yeah. So Tobes, Going back to kind of the original thought, the the weather. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. People, no, no. It's it's fair because I think I think that needs to be talked about because people are often go, "Where are the facilities? Why yeah. is it always in Toronto?" And it's not a. I don't view it as a Toronto centric bias. I view it as the way things have been funded and the way that they've been built. It's if it's, I could interject for just one second, just to get it. a little bit mean, because it at at a at a certain point it becomes you're upset that Hamilton didn't premiere at Chet's Farm instead of on Broadway. Do you know what I mean? Like. I, I, it sounds mean and terrible, but like there has to be I'm some crying. logic. There has to be some logic in there at a certain point, right? Like yeah. you know, so so it is. It is what it is. But yeah. uh, and that's that's yeah. the harsh that's the harsh truth that people outside of Toronto don't necessarily want to hear. And and if mm-hmm. you're talking about Quebec and their appetite for big stadium sports projects, there is one big Olympic mm-hmm. stadium that never worked the way they wanted it, and they only paid off paid it off in the last, I believe, ten years. So yeah, the yeah. appetite in that province to spend money isn't there. So Tobes, mm-hmm. going up into a cold weather environment, bringing mm-hmm. a team up, if you were the American team, you know, are you concerned about that? Or are you sort of going, both teams have to play in this? It's 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 nothing. What are your thoughts? No, so I don't know if uh, Canadians are paying too much attention to this, but in the qualifying cycle for the 2014 World Cup, we had a very famous game against Costa Rica in the snow. Inches yep. of snow on the ground. You had people trying to like shovel it mid game at halftime whenever the ball's on the other side of the field you, your passes mm-hmm. you'd lift it in the air and it would land and just stick there <laughs> <laughs> and and costa rica had absolutely no idea what to do and we beat them yeah. two nil 
I think Clint Dempsey had a goal that was so snowy, you couldn't even tell like what was happening. And then the players started to run off the pitch and like, well, I hope we just scored because they're <laughs> celebrating or they're, nice, or they're vacating nice. their duties. I don't know what they're doing. Um, and that was a huge, huge advantage for us. Because even though it's not necessarily like, we, you know, we don't live in the snowiest, not all of the U.S. is incredibly snowy, but Costa Rica is mm-hmm. not snowy at all. Yeah. And we definitely have yeah. more experience with that. It's definitely an advantage. Um, it, concerning the other stuff, you know, I'm not going to pretend to to know much about Canadian inner city politics. So I'm yeah. not, what do you yeah. mean, Tobes, gonna... you, didn't, you didn't research <laughs> it, that? Come on. It can be, Tobes, it, it's very it's very similar to interstate politics at the end of the day, right? Like yeah. certain states at any one moment have mm-hmm. a better tax credit for this industry versus that industry, you know, mm-hmm. blah, 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 blah. blah the the blah, conversation blah. about the U.S. stadiums is also a bit interesting because there was a report that, you know, whenever we play Mexico, we always try to go to the Midwest where there's the least number of um, Latin yeah. American people who might root for Mexico, but then how does that conflict with your uh how does wanting to have a home game actually be a home game conflict with your desire to grow the game amongst other populations because if you do Absolutely. that you're clearly isolating your um hispanic community to go root for l tree instead of root for the u.s yeah. um, it's a big conversation i i am not entirely sure where i land on it yet i think it's i mean i i I, I land on the on the don't charge obscene amounts of yeah money well that's sitting in the nosebleeds yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> if the question yeah. if the question is mm-hmm. can the ussf do better the answer is always yes but in terms of specifically <laughs> where to where to hold the game i think yeah, yeah yeah there's still some room to explore there to be fair yeah. i think every federation you could say that about them that they could all do better there's always mm-hmm something 100 like, is, is there examples of people doing great stuff yeah but, but let's not never rest on your loyals mm-hmm. we yeah. see so much yeah. about you know the idea of, of bringing in the traditional fan the one that stands and cheers you know what there's lots of fans who who are wanting maybe a quieter space to watch the game right and there's a lot of clubs and nations and stadiums that are mm-hmm. being built in this way and that's you know that's that's what i end up hoping for the the, the dollars at the end of the day is it spelt spent spent well enough yeah, that more yeah, people absolutely. can come, and it's not something that's always out of reach with these ridiculous U.S. prices. That that yeah. that always shocks me, Tobes, because yeah. I expect it to be around the same price or cheaper than a Major League Baseball game, and even those are kind of expensive these days. But a twenty-five to forty-five dollar ticket. Mm-hmm. That's that's the it's not a and then, it is not a seven hundred dollar ticket. Yeah, exactly. And to be clear, that part is completely ridiculous. Like the prices mm-hmm. they're charging for the seats in the stadium, there's no excuse. It's absolutely ridiculous to do that yeah. and then come beg on Twitter for funds for your U twenty camp is just disgusting. Like how can how can you charge that much and then come ask us for more money? It's yeah. kind of ridiculous. Yeah. But then the the conversation about specifically like where to hold the game, I think, is the more interesting one because because yeah. the prices is just it's obviously yeah. wrong. <laughs> so I'm, here's stick piano stick piano's comment is is really interesting because it's it's very cyclical right like mm-hmm. because the fan base isn't coming to the low leverage situations right mm-hmm. like they're they're not going to those so that's pie in the sky right like i would love to save the shenanigans for the games that don't matter but no mm-hmm. one's coming like no one's coming to the big games what i said first <laughs> <laughs> We, we got you. We got you. Okay, so <laughs> going back just to, to, the, to the games that Canada is playing up in Edmonton, which I think is... is what do you, you know, think, Scoots? What do, what you, do think? I think? you think? it's Yeah. What do I think? I get that. Okay. Well, what mm. I think is I think it's actually really, really cool to, to see the games. It is going to be really, really cool. You you, yeah. you hit the nail on the head. Wow. There, yeah. Okay. The good point. Okay. <laughs> so not only is it going to be very cool, uh, it's mm. going to be a really great experience that I'm hoping that a lot of people who have not had the chance to see football soccer in person get the chance to go out there you know when there's these outdoor hockey games that that, that for those who are fans of the nhl they do these regular outdoor games and they've done them a nuts a number of times and what i always remember is the majority of the fans that go to that game there's your diehards and then you have to fill out the stadium and the rest of the stadium is usually casual fans who haven't seen it maybe casually watch and they always walk away going what a cool experience so at the end of the day let's put i'm Obviously, I want dubs. I want six points mm-hmm. out of this window. But yeah, if we yeah. walk out of here with an incredibly positive momentum where more people are interested in the team, it's 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 getting, you know, it's it's more commonly seen on the top of tsn.ca, on the top of sportsnet.ca, at the top of these sports sites, which uh, are invested in their own products that they've bought into, hockey and football sure. and CFL and mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. But blah, eventually, blah, blah. something will get 
any sport when it gets to that point where everyone's interested in it they're going to put that aside okay yeah uh, we would love to show what we're showing but people don't care they want to hear about davies they want to hear about david they want to hear about the next sure. game they want to hear about the next window they want to know how they can watch davies overseas like that's maybe i'm pie in the sky here jeffrey but i'm hoping that at the end of the day we have six points uh and we have i mean another, that's best an, case an, scenario another yeah. twenty thousand new fans who've yeah. seen it in person and are now becoming diehards or sharing it or their kid wants to play or whatever it is. That's my dream. So let, let me put you on the spot. Where do you, where, where's your line of demarcation, right? Like, is it worth anteing the new fan unicorn for performance in, in our, in the first uh, Octo that we've been in, in, in two decades? I think there's a balance there. I would never want to put our competitive edge at risk. I would never want to put the, the, the goal of winning, not to be the number one thing. I think that's, I think success. Do you think we did here? No, I don't okay. think we did here. I don't I think, think we're we hewing here. very close to the line. I think very I've, close to the line. I think the conversation is coming to when, when are we going to ensure that, that winning and the program success is always the number one thing. But so far, have I heard concerns about where mm -hmm. we're heading? And, and you're certainly somebody who feels like we're getting to that edge. And I can mm -hmm. I can agree that that's, that's something that I think we need to be conscious of. But Very we also need of, yeah. to grow. We also, on the other hand, need to be cognizant that if we want the things that we want for this country, for the programs, for even the Canadian Premier League, we need to absolutely pump it. And we need to do it in a way that not only encourages people to come out who've never been there before, but also encourages uh, the fact that we're going for dubs, we're going for wins, and we're going to constantly try mm -hmm. to get better. If we're not trying yeah. to get better, I, I'm one of those people who believes that if you're not trying to improve, you are hurting yourself. And if you're not Absolutely. constantly looking for that next upgrade, which should be in the center back area, if you're out there hurting, just <laughs> listening, uh, <laughs> you know, that's how I feel. So I've ranted a little bit yeah. there, but I, I think that, you know, if if we have a conversation and we end up in Newfoundland, mm -hmm. as some sort of tribute to 1986, without sure. without considering how it affects how we're going to play, is the pitch in good shape? All those sorts of we're things. We're doing this wrong. Yeah. Then we're doing yeah. it wrong. As much as mm -hmm. I would love to have a game out in Newfoundland to celebrate that 86 kind of memory, 100. percent It has to make be it done a friendly. Right. Yeah. And it, it's yeah. it could be part of our celebration tour. Yeah, you know, let's yep. let's think let's think far ahead and dream. <laughs> I mean, you don't you know you don't see the Mexican national team play anywhere but the Azteca, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that that's that's a consequence of not having a national stadium, like at least rubber stamping a mm -hmm. national stadium, right? Mm -hmm. Because then it opens the floodgates to this conjecture. And you know, Mexico is not a small nation either, right? Like there are people, there are Altri fans that are down in the in the horn that will never that have never been to Azteca, right? And they probably feel more uh, uh, tossed aside than than the Winnipeggers or the or the Edmontonians that are screening bloody murder, right? Um, it, it is it's something that's going to that's that's coming up in the in the forward view uh, as this as this team grows in stature and grows as a draw. It's yet another uh, epoch epochal moment that's going to that's going to occur. And this is not me vouching for BMO to be the national stadium, right? Like in about two weeks, you're not playing there until next year right it's it's as simple as that unless you throw a bubble over it um in, and that wouldn't work either because you know ew. but uh uh yeah like it, it it is what it is and and um it's interesting it, because that, it's a similar issue with the states too right is this idea of do we mm -hmm. play in one place that is our kind of training hub our center or the place that yep. we're always going to perform and train and if you talk to olympic athletes in many countries the idea of having a national center is something they all rave about. They love it. They exactly. Go to the same place. They train there all the time. Well, they're creatures of habit, right? Like, yeah. but we're know, unique yeah. in the in the world of you know the, the world of football is very Eurocentric. The idea that mm -hmm. things are closer than the, than than they are here. Mm -hmm. When we mm -hmm. talk about away days, we talk about you know the national stadium in in England is in comparison to our country is all within reach. Mm -hmm. You can yep. take a train. You can get there. You know, relatively within a day uh, yep. or shorter to, to be able to watch the game in, in London. We don't have that option here and the Americans nope. don't have that option and the Mexicans don't have that option. So it's something that I think will always be a debate. Mm -hmm. Well, if you talk to a guy that lives in Newcastle, Wembley's way too far and they're never going there. <laughs> well, that's, so. that's, 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 and I was right? hesitating on my words there because yeah. I didn't want to yeah. make the assumption because I know a lot of folks up north who would uh, be like, no, I'm just not going there. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard to explain <laughs> to people that I live in the metropolitan East Coast, but I'm like two hours away from any MLS team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. It really is. I mean, that, that that map that went around that was showing the distances of MLS sides and they put it over uh, over Europe. And it's like to get from, you know, uh, the white caps to TFC was like the length of Europe. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think the white caps were somewhere in the Atlantic and, and it was just like. Yeah, yeah, that's what, that's what we have to deal with perpetually. Right. Um, and of course, Europe isn't going to care because this is their sport. And, you know, yeah, that Major sure. League Baseball doesn't give a crap about Europe and, and, and NFL doesn't give a crap about Europe. So turnabout is mm -hmm. turnabout is fair play. But that that's my concern. I mean, this just to circle back to what we were talking about before we went off on a million tangents. <laughs> that's that's what I'm most worried about uh, this cycle. Um, did we make a mistake? You know, did, did, did we, did we, did we decide to multitask too much? And was that at the expense of what so far has been a, a fantasy land, you know, was, was this a step too far for our, for our burgeoning men's national program? Did we bite off more than we could chew? Did we give priority to something that we shouldn't have? Was it that important for these FIFA guys to, to go to a full Commonwealth stadium? And was it worth two points or three points that, that if, if you, if you put a gun to my head and said, you know, what, what is your number one fear? That's it there in a nutshell. It has nothing to do with the lineup. It has nothing to do with the opponents. It has to do with this decision that we've made. Yeah, and I think that's a fair fear. I I, I don't think it's... I, obviously, we see on the Twitter sphere, and I, I'm sure, Tobes, there's similar debates in, in the States too, where it's just there's two sides to an argument. Neither people... Neither side is wrong. They both have concerns or priorities that they view differently. And I think mm -hmm. it's a fair concern. And the only answer we're going to see is... is tonight. Week. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like that's tonight. Tonight. And yeah. That's very kind, Scoot. And the U.S. Uh, Twitter community, there's two sides, and they scream, and they're both wrong. So. Oh well. <laughs> you know me. I'm just trying to be nice. What can I say? So finally, there's, before there's many, there's many sides in in Kansas Twitter, and they all hate Toronto. Every last one of them, except for <laughs> hey, the... <laughs> hey, listen, we're cold out here. We don't have a lot. No one talks about us. So to make sure you, you can't true... get out of your house. You can't <laughs> actually leave your house today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you I got know, a I snowstorm. Know. The likes of which. Uh, no one's ever seen. Yeah. yeah, it's a good thing that my friends who drive decided to drive to Edmonton made the decision to go a day or two early. Mm. I'd say, yeah, Ooh, nice. Anyway, nice. Uh, last question, kind of topic before we, we wrap up here. The two games. Cheers. We're not going to make. We're not going to ask Jeffrey to make predictions, but I'm going to go oh, ahead yeah. and 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 I'm going to make them because I like to be. Uh, All right, let's on go. Edge. So Mexico tonight. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a Costa Rica win. tonight. All right, sorry, oh, Costa Rica tonight, Mexico. Mexico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, Costa Rica tonight for the states. I mm -hmm. think it's going to be. A, it's it's going to. Uh, sorry, Costa Rica for Canada tonight. Got a lot of words out of my mouth there. Here we go. Yeah, that was a lot. That was <laughs> two, yeah, yeah. two. I think it's going to be two one Canada. I think it's going to be a late okay. goal for Costa Rica. I think we're going to go up two nil in the first half. Awesome. You're you're writing that down, aren't you? I can hear you. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Mexico game. I th I I I think it's going to be a one one. I would love to see three. I see. I'd love to see three points out of there, but the weather looks like it's going to be pretty cold next week. I see the ball slowing down. I see the game getting pretty. Depending on the weather, if it's minus two or minus three, like it says, with a wind, that ball is going to be pretty hard. It's not going to be a lot yeah. of fun to move around. But if it's plus one and snowing, that could be a very different game. That's the kind of Absolutely. interesting part about this temperature that we're at right now. Is either going to be just above. And that kind of nice, you're out and you're like, oh, it's winter and it's nice. Yeah, or it's yeah, going to yeah. be that blast of cold air with a warmth where and high where, humidity yeah. where you feel mm -hmm. like you're you're not wearing anything yeah. and you're just you're yeah, just being yeah. blasted with cold air. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your testicles basically live in, live in the back of your throat kind yeah, of weather. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. It's a secret Canadians have learned to survive over the years. Too, so we'll, we'll talk about <laughs> it on another, on another episode. <laughs> but hey, it's a, yeah. big thank you guys. We've gone over time. I, I We sure have. I big, big, big thank you to Jeffrey and his partner for being as patient as they have been with uh did you hear that, Alicia? You're getting the thanks. <laughs> with <laughs> with with going over time, we had a lot more to talk about than I expected. That is totally mm -hmm. on me. So thank you guys. No, for, that's for we, we knew it. it. We love we love doing these. We love it. This is so much fun. <laughs> I love doing this with you two guys. It's fantastic. So before we go, I do want to give you guys a quick opportunity, just a quick shout out. Let me know where people can get a hold of you. Uh, Jeffrey, why don't you jump ahead and go first there. Where can people find your work uh, or uh, any of your podcast activity these days? Uh, go to Waking the Red. It's uh, We talk about the team that will not be named. And occasionally we talk about uh, other teams that we like. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm on Twitter uh, with hot takes all the time. So uh, find me on Twitter at Jeffrey P. Desker. 
and uh yeah yeah go go canada tobes where can people find you uh any last words for for the folks here yeah just uh at tobes laroni on twitter uh you know i'm pretty go ahead i was gonna say look for the moose yeah, look for yeah, the look moose. For the moose. The current profile picture. I knew he was going to say the moose. I knew he was going to say the moose. I'm attached I love it. to the love moose. It. I don't want to get rid of it, even though I know it's like bad. It's very Canadian of you. So you I know. Keep the moose. It's, yeah, it's a bit yeah. odd, isn't it? Um, <laughs> I, I want to go on record saying that I think this Costa Rica game for you guys is a bit of a trap game. Costa Rica's better. Me too. They're better earlier in the window when their players aren't tired. I think you're going to draw Costa Rica and beat Mexico. Wow. The I think I'll take the wing, that. The wingers against it. Mexico, I think, are... Uh, it's a bad matchup for Mexico, and I think Costa Rica is going to surprise you. So do I. So do I. Well, I just, you. I just think, I just think maybe we'll have like a Mark Anthony K smash and grab goal. Mm-hmm. So I should say that's, that's a bold doing. prediction. You could also win four 0 I wouldn't be surprised. Nice, love it. Nice. Love it. Thank you guys so much for your time today. Really do appreciate. It. We have some great games to get into. Whether you're excited, nervous, whatever it is, the whole combination of the whole thing. We have some great football to watch over this window. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, good luck to your team tonight, Tobes. We're not playing Thank against you, you so I, I can say that. Yeah, go uh, USA. <laughs> and uh, and and you know what? I think it would be really great if we could get back together for another window in the future. I love these yes. conversations. Of course. It's a lot of fun. Of it. course. I love it. I love it. We get to share our Twitter chat with the with the rest of the population. <laughs> exactly. <you know>? exactly. <laughs> so thanks again, guys. Uh, have yourself a great day. And uh, thank. this has been Scoot Talk Sports, Episode 9.